You know, I really think artists are born and not made. All of my life, I was the kid who was, you know, had the crayons or the chalk on the sidewalk or the paint by number set. And uh, it's always been something that's in me. I would ask around and no one would teach me how to paint. And so I just got all the stuff and I didn't know if it was right. In fact, it was crazy because I had this huge painting uh, canvas and I started it in the sixth grade. And my French horn lessons were in the Fine Arts Center at BYU and so I was a little kid carrying a giant French horn case uh, to my lesson and then I'd walk past these paintings by the faculty and by the students. Just really felt a connection, even as a young kid. Before I painted, I would stir all the food as a child just to see the color change, divinity. That's great, putting food coloring in. Mother would say, stop stirring the food. I, I would stay up till three painting. My parents couldn't get me to go to sleep. <laughs> so eventually, at the age of 14, I convinced my parents to let me trade in my music lessons for art lessons. When I was a teenager, I painted my face. And boy, did I lay it on, but it was my creative outlet. It's the only occupation I've ever had is uh, that of an artist uh, and maybe mowing lawns. I decided to take an art class for an elective. Once I took it, I realized, yes, this is what I want to do. I couldn't paint worth anything. I was really pretty pitiful. And people would say, well, how are you going to make a living? Well, I never thought that I wouldn't be able to make a living. So I just looked at him and said, well, the same way I always have, you know, I'll work hard. I was a wildland firefighter for a little while. I was a ski bum in Steamboat Springs for a little while. And the whole time I was painting, Painting in general, I, I've always done it since I was a little kid. I think I was born with it. <laughs> I got a job teaching junior high school in California and taught there for five years, at the end of which I realized I was either going to be a really good junior high school teacher or I was going to be an artist. But I didn't think I could do both. I was uh, in kindergarten class and we were supposed to be drawing dinosaurs. And of course, at that age, at five years old, I knew all of the dinosaurs, and I knew how to draw them all. I looked around, and the entire class was in back of me looking at what I was doing. And the teacher was there also. Just seemed to me, in my, in my mind, that she was in awe of you know, what I was doing. And she complimented me. and said oh, it was great and wanted the class to, to make sure to see how I was doing it and, and that sort of thing. And I decided that day I was going to be an artist. I remember it as clear as anything. And I never looked back. My name is James Christensen. I'm an artist. I have recently become part of a rather unique experiment called Illum. It has two meanings. It can mean resplendent enlightenment, or it can mean spreading the light. This art gallery is unique because it's the only gallery I've ever been involved with that has the artist sign a mission statement. And that mission statement says that we will create work that is wise-hearted, which is a term that comes from the book of Exodus regarding the artisans who built the tabernacle. And it means to illuminate and to uplift and inspire. Oh, inspirational art is when, when you just are gonna die if you don't paint it. Almost always it's the light that makes me choose what I wanna paint. Maybe I'll even have in mind where I'm gonna go to paint. And I'm, I'm going in that direction that morning. And I'll see the light hitting something else. And I'll just go, that's it. I have to stop. I have to paint. If I don't paint this right now, I'm just not going to be able to survive. Well, I think in inspirational art is art that lightens somebody's life. When they view it, they view it, and it enlightens their soul.
or it enlightens their spirit and they can feel the spirit of the painting. Spiritual doesn't necessarily mean uh, religious or scriptural. I'm not sure I've ever thought of old barns enlightening the souls of people that buy them. I'm not, but apparently there is something that, about that that they have a spirit to them. I mean, you can look at a piece like this and maybe some people could look at uh, Fading Light and Zion National Park as spiritual. I know I do. What is inspiring to me to paint is um, the quality of light and the way light shines down on an ordinary object. Anytime I can motivate anybody to have something that's positive, something that inspires them to want to do better, I think there's great inspiration just in objects that are beautiful. I think that the work that I intend to put in the gallery is going to definitely have a spiritual message, but it might be hunchbacks and flying frogs and I don't know yet. A lot of people wait a long time to find a gallery who says to them, I just want you to paint. I'm not going to tell you what to paint. I just want you to be inspired and to paint. I had been thinking about this for a long time and actually wondering why art of a spiritual nature has never really been organized. There's never really been a venue for uh, someone to kind of reach inside their soul and say, what do I really believe and how am I going to express that? We've now got all of these artists painting what they love. One of the artists I talked with last night really put it well. She said, you know, this has changed the way I go about creating my art. I think that if someone paints something well, that it's just inevitable that the human eye is going to see that and register it as truth. You will see what is beautiful to those artists. What stops me cold and brings me to my knees is color, pattern, lighting effects that just, I just am so drawn to them that I have a need to try and create them and make that work on a canvas. In my estimation, um, the mind can kind of get in the way of tapping into something that, that really connects us to the infinite and more to uh, a spiritual side. To me, that's what the arts are kind of about. There is a certain spiritual gift that was given to us, but everybody growing up has that. It's just we have it at different levels. This is a visual gift I can, I can share with the world. No, I do believe that the gift I have is a gift from God. We are all put here for some reason, and I believe that there's more to us just than to live our lives in a wholesome manner. I think that we're also here to, to go beyond that, and I think one of my gifts is to be able to create, to paint and light other people's lives that same way. The source of the gift is, is from the Spirit. It's from a higher source. And, uh, and that's humbling. And that's all the more reason why we need to be sincere and honest and, and pass it on. I think it's uh, a, a unique opportunity uh, for artists of faith uh, to be able to share um, their vision and their insights and their work um, without having to be necessarily scriptural stories or illustrations of past scriptural events. I don't paint that way. But the work I do has messages, it has layers of meaning, and sometimes the message is a little obscure uh, and you have to work for it a little. Uh, and sometimes it's you're chuckling, but then you realize, whoa, that's me or that's an important thing. You know, when I'm in a painting, there's nothing else. I was painting, in fact, on the side of the road, and I was so involved in my painting that a policeman with his siren came up behind me and stopped because he wanted to tell me to move off the road because I was going to cause an accident. I didn't hear him till he was right on top of me. He liked to have to go miss, you know, <laughs> tap me on the shoulder. I was so involved. I didn't hear a siren stopping behind me. It's such a part of my existence that if I'm not painting for a few days, my daughter will tell me I better get into the studio because I'm in such a grumpy mood. We take the elements 
of art and you take line and form and color and direction and texture and all of these things and you take all of these elements combine them in a, in a, in a way to communicate and when I think of the creation of this world that the Savior took um, the elements that were there and organized them to be this world and that's what I feel like I'm doing I'm taking elements that are floating around out there and I pull them together and my job is to create something that will communicate and, uh, and art certainly does communicate. The painting can communicate, it has its own kind of intelligence and I, I just have to be very sensitive and aware as an artist to, to work with it, uh, not, not force it but but work with it and, and what it ends up being. That's a real pleasure for me to, in the end, look at something that I've done and say, I couldn't, I didn't plan that. I allowed it to, to occur, but I, I couldn't repeat it. I couldn't repeat that mark. I couldn't repeat that, that color, really. What's in your heart comes out. It's either gonna come out of your mouth, it's gonna come out on your paintbrush, it's gonna end up in your work. The scenes um, inspire me, but I'm in love with my medium, too. I love the way oil um, comes off the brush. I, I love the way you can work it over and change it. So I'm inspired by my medium as well as the scenes out there. Art really has the ability to bring an emotion back to you as you look at it. I find that I buy pieces that I'm emotionally connected with. I look at an old farmhouse down a long, rural road and I see my childhood and the memories of my father and mother and how I was raised. So each piece of art has an emotional connection to it. Standing in front of a, an original oil painting is an experience you can't have any other way. They see, sense something, they, they react to something uh, that touches them in, in some way. Uh, what we're saying is that there may be spiritual uh, connections there President Hinckley made a comment to me personally one time that one of the purposes of art is that it carries a spirit within it. The artist actually places a spirit within the paint. And I really believe that that's true. Elum is a special place, and special things happen in special places. I am always moved when someone experiences something within themselves when they view my work. There's, there's a, an impact that's, that's in, at, a, at a visceral and spiritual level, and I'm grateful when anybody even stops to look at a piece of artwork let alone stopping long enough to think about it. But I hope that people who see the work will find in it something of a, of a sacred place. When I first started as a professional artist, I would do horses, Western art, uh, birds of prey. And um, I think my life changed a little bit oh, when I lost a child. And I realized that I could paint other women's children as they had passed away. And it was a real spiritual experience for me to be able to do that. And I realized then that um, there's a spiritual facet to the people, to people that have passed on. And they really do care what we do with them. And every time I would paint someone who had passed on, I could feel them. And that kind of brought me to the point of doing the pioneers. Because I loved the history of these people. And I loved the fact that they, uh, 
had a story to tell. I'd never sculpted before, never taken art classes, and I came home from work one day and I open the door and I look at that sculpture that I'd purchased and something exploded in my heart. And it was, it was a part of me that woke up. And this part of me literally said, I can do that. I went to the local craft store and purchased every piece of clay they had and came home and began sculpting. And that night, I stayed up for about six or seven hours and I sculpted in my garage. Four years later, I was making my living at it. Every day is a new day. As an artist, uh, we never fully conquer our craft. We're still students no matter how much experience we have. You know, the story sort of unfolds every day. I think I have a responsibility to myself to make art that, that means something to me, you know, that's honest. When one talks about responsibility as an artist, I have pretty strong feelings about that because I think because art is such um, a potentially powerful medium of communication that the artist has to take responsibility for what he's putting out there for people. And so in all my work, I try to think about who's going to see it, what are they going to think, what are the possibilities here. Uh, is it sacred? Is it kind of fun and has a sacred edge? While I like a lot of paintings that I do, and I have some favorites, the one I'm most excited about, the one I'm, I'm most intrigued with is the next one, because I'm excited about the possibilities of communicating something a little different. But my favorite's always the next one. The other night when I was um, alone, it was late, um, there were some construction problems and I was ripping my hair out and, and um, I just got into a quiet place and, and just was in, in this contemplative place. There was a light on one piece. I turned off everything else in the gallery, just had lights on it, so that the homeless people outside the windows could not see me. And they walked along and they dropped their backpacks at the side of the window. And they put their faces against that window and started to weep. All of us welcome anyone into the gallery, um, whether they're at the top of the financial realm or at the very bottom, it matters not a thing to us. They are the same. Well, I think as a collector, as you come home from a long day of work trying to you know, navigate this difficult world, to be able to sit down in front of a, a magnificent painting or look at a sculpture and to be able to feel the spirit that the artist put into that uh, in some ways you know heals the heals the soul i hope the patrons will walk in the door and see the artwork and 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 feel something that it will lift and inspire others is pursuing art a sacrifice i don't think so i think that you know, chasing light and beauty and creating it, I don't see that as a sacrifice. 
honestly, I can't not chase it. That's the thing that has kind of come up over and over again as, as I've gone through the ups and downs of, of the art world and, and being an artist. It might, it's, it's within me. I can't, that's what I, it's just what I do. Our spirit can get into the painting, into the work, and it's a reflection of, of the creator. And hopefully that that can, you know, move people in a way that maybe they haven't been moved before. You know, I'm just really stubborn. You have to be really committed to, to your craft. I, I do think it's a gift, but it's something you have to work at. Great artists have great gifts, and they put that into their, that piece. And part of them goes with them when they hang that in a gallery such as this. And I feel like I'm taking home a piece of that great gift or that great art. When you talk to other artists, it isn't something that they choose to do as much as something they must do. You can analyze a work of art as, as long as you want, but, um, but it all comes down to, have I been inspired or not? When a piece really comes from the heart, it's almost as if the artist forgets the process, forgets the mechanics, and watches as the object of art comes to life, as if it wants to be created. I really believe that when an artist does that, it shows through on the canvas. And I think it shows through in a way that um, you can't fake, you can't replicate. For me, I'm inspired by light. And there's a quality of light and a quality of rapidly moving light, something that's transient that won't ever be there again, that I know that if I paint this, I'm going to have caught one little tiny bit of August 1st that'll never exist ever in history ever again.